Hello friends, so in the previous lecture we have discussed regarding the coordination among various devices particularly in distribution network. So, this coordination is carried out for distribution network and we have discussed that four possibilities are there. So, at four levels coordination is required. The first level is the coordination between two overcurrent relays or multiple overcurrent relays. Then the second is the coordination between fuse and recloser. The third is the coordination between fuse, two fuses or sometimes if I consider domestic consumers which utilizes MCB and maybe at a higher 415 volt three phase level utility is using MCCB then coordination between this or coordination between these two devices that is also required. And last that is coordination between recloser and overcurrent relays that is also required. We have already discussed in the previous class what is the important issue which we need to consider when we talk about the coordination between two overcurrent relays. And we have discussed that when we incorporate DG then this coordination becomes more difficult particularly with reference to the minimum discrimination time available between uh, two characteristic of the relays. Now, in this case let us consider the second point that is the coordination between fuse and recloser. So, before we start this coordination the hierarchy of this coordination is very important. So, the first comes that is the low rated fuse let us say it is rating is very small. Then we have high rated fuse and then we have the recloser and the last comes that is the overcurrent relays. Before we start let us understand what is recloser. So, recloser is nothing but a device which is self controlled and which operates automatically for any AC system and which is meant for interruption of the current and at the same time it is also having an reclosing attempt with some predetermined or predefined sequence of opening and reclosing. This is followed by four things that is first is resetting, second is hold, third is closed and fourth is the lockout. So, if I just uh, tell you how the recloser works. So, let us consider a bus A and here we have one feeder connected between another bus B and let us consider that one relay is available here with circuit breaker right and this relay is equipped with reclosing facility this relay and breakers relay plus circuit breakers both are equipped with reclosing facility. So, when we have the relay and breakers capable of having reclosing attempt so, now let us understand what is the function of recloser. So, whenever any fault occurs here then this relay senses this fault assuming that this fault within the zone of this relay and this relay senses the fault and it gives signal to this circuit breaker. So, here the pole of circuit breaker that becomes open. So, once the pole of circuit breaker if I draw further the same diagram here then you can see that the pole of circuit breaker I am drawing single line diagram. So, pole of circuit breaker that is going to become open. Now, the meaning of recloser is after opening of certain time period the pole of the circuit breaker recloses and this reclosing attempt is carried out depending upon certain specified sequence and this is valid for AC system only. So, this is nothing but the function of reclosers. The now the question comes why reclosers are required, why we need to carry out reclosing attempt of recloser when fault occurs. So, the reason is majority of faults which are going to occur on the overhead distribution network they are transient in nature. So, almost 80 to 90 percent faults are uh, transient in nature and only 10 to 20 percent faults are permanent in nature. 
So, this transient faults uh, also known as temporary faults that can be cleared momentarily if we de-energize the line. So, that de-energization of line that is to be carried out with the help of reclosers or reclosing attempt of the circuit breaker pole. If we go for reclosing attempt of the one of the pole or the of the circuit breaker, then we are going to deliberately de-energize the line and for the time period if fault is not there, if it vanishes and when we reclose it, then the line is working in perfect or healthy condition or normal condition. So, such type of transient faults are going to occur because of many reasons. The very important and prominent reason is the lightening surge, uh, may be because of insulator flash over or some other reason, may be because of swinging wires or when any temporary contact touches uh, with foreign bodies, then also such type of uh, fault occurs and those faults are transient or temporary faults and they are going to die out may be after one or may be two cycles or three cycles and in that case there is no need to again carry out tripping of circuit breakers and manual intervention is not required. Hence, there is a need to use auto reclosing system in order to improve service continuity particularly for distribution system. So, we know that for in case of distribution system, if we want to improve continuity of service, then we must go for the reclosers which are equipped or, or which are associated with the relays and circuit breakers that is installed on the distribution network or feeder. Now, if we consider the classification of reclosers, then reclosers can be classified based on number of phases. So, either we can use it for single phase or three phase because we know that in distribution network some of the single phase feeders are also there, two phase feeders are also there, three phase feeders are also there. So, based on number of phases we can classify, based on number of attempts we can classify whether we want single reclosing attempt or we want multiple reclosing attempt. So, that is known as multi shot reclosing relay and the previous one is known as single shot reclosing relay and the classification can also be done based on the speed. So, high speed uh, reclosures are also there, low speed reclosures are also there. For transmission system, we need high speed reclosers, whereas for distribution system, we need low speed reclosers. Now, when we go for this reclosing attempt, as I told you that the first uh, point when we talk about the reclosers that is nothing but how or what sequence we are going to follow for the circuit breaker which is associated with the relay and reclosers. So, here when we talk about reclosing attempt as per IC standards, the circuit breaker must be capable of withstanding certain operating cycles uh, at rated breaking current. So, this cycles is given here where the meaning of O that is nothing but opening. So, opening of the pole of the circuit breaker. So, this is nothing but the opening of the pole of the circuit breaker. Then there is a waiting period of 0 0.3 second or 300 millisecond. Then the period is closing followed by opening. So, this is nothing but the closing followed by opening. So, this is going to close and again it is going to open and again there is a waiting period of 3 minutes and then again the same sequence closing followed by opening is carried out. So, this sequence need to be followed by any circuit breaker which is installed in the actual field. Now, let us understand why reclosures are very important as far as the distribution network is concerned and why we are more concerned about the coordination between reclosers and fuse particularly for distribution network. So, to understand this concept we need to understand one of the important phenomena which is known as instantaneous free block out or sometimes it is also known as the fuse saving concept. So, we will see this two concept. So, we have already discussed that almost 80 to 90 percent faults which are going to take place on overhead distribution conductors, they are temporary or transient in nature and they disappear after let us say 2 cycles or 3 cycles. 
So, therefore, if we installed uh, the reclosures in the distribution network, uh, then obviously by de-energizing the line temporarily, uh, we are removing this transient or temporary fault and we are improving the service continuity of the distribution network or system. However, when we adopt these things, some issues are faced. Uh, let us say to understand this issue, let us consider one example of one network. So, here you can see we considered one utility which is again connected to the transformer and on the other LV side of the transformer, we have the bus connected, let us say this is bus A and then we have several feeders are there, uh, HT consumers are there, let us say feeder 1, feeder 2, feeder n. And if we consider one of the feeder, let us say feeder 1, then from this feeder 1, one of the connections are taken, this are known as laterals. So, this connections are known as the laterals. So, on this laterals, let us say some load that is connected may be in some domestic or residential load or some induction motors like that and this load is protected by this fuse. And on this feeder, we have the relay with the uh, reclosing facility. So, now the point is if fault occurs on this laterals as shown here on these laterals, then obviously the first device which is going to sense the fault that is fuse and fuse is going to operate. So, as an in charge of the substation, we have to send the lineman to rewire the fuse and again that will involve manual intervention and uh, the continuity of the electric supply that is affected. Because why we want to avoid this? The first reason is that for every time we know that if any fault occurs on these laterals, let us say 10 faults are going to occur in a span of one year on these laterals, out of 10 faults, 8 faults are transient or temporary in nature. Right, we have discussed. So, for this 8 faults, we do not want to rewire the fuse because these faults are transient or temporary in nature and we do not want to operate the fuse because each if fuse operates for this uh, let us say 10 faults are going to occur in a span of 1 year. And out of this 10 faults, only 2 faults are permanent in nature whereas, 8 faults are transient in nature or temporary in nature and we do not want for this 8 faults operation of fuse we do not want. So, how to avoid this? So, in that case what we do is we put it here the recloser and characteristic of recloser should be coordinated with the characteristic of fuse in such a way that the recloser should operate first for any fault on this laterals and fuse is not going to operate. So, whenever any fault occurs on this laterals, let us say these 10 faults are going to occur for this faults, recloser is going to operate first. So, any fault occurs here, recloser should detect it, it will operate. So, obviously, pole of the breaker becomes open and then recloser operates. So, pole of the breaker recloses. And if these 8 faults are transient or temporary in nature, then again uh, the system becomes normal as and when we reclose the pole of the circuit breaker. So, there is no unnecessary disconnection of this feeder by the operation of fuse and there is no question of rewiring of fuse, there is no involvement of human. If we avoid this, then we have to coordinate the characteristic of recloser with the characteristic of fuse in such a way that for all faults uh, that those are going to occur on the laterals, recloser should operate first. This concept is known as fuse saving concept because we do not want to operate the fuse, we want to operate the fuse only when the permanent fault is there. So, if suppose for example, there are two cases, let us say case 1 is like this that there is a transient fault on the lateral. So, obviously, recloser will sense this fault, recloser will operate, uh, it will again reclose this and fault is transient. So, system becomes healthy. So, this is the nothing but the transient or temporary fault. 
no issue. The second case we consider let us say that is the permanent fault on the feeder. So, if there is a permanent fault on this lateral here there is a permanent fault on the lateral then recloser will operate, but still fault is permanent in nature. So, again it becomes open and it remains in open condition it is also known as instantaneous trip lockout. So, after one operation the pole of the circuit breaker will go in lockout condition it would not operate and then fuse will operate and fuse is going to disconnect this fault because it is a permanent fault. And in both the cases we want this operation and this concept is known as the fuse saving concept and this is widely used in distribution network. This is widely used in distribution network. So, when we consider the same network again we need to follow the hierarchy that is of the low rated fuse to high rated fuse to reclosers and to the over current relays, but this is only possible when there is no interconnection of distributed generators or distributed energy resources into the distribution network. As and when there is a interconnection of distributed generators into the radial network, then this whole fuse saving concept that is disturbed. Let us see how this is disturbed and how it is going to work. So, let us consider with this diagram. So, I have shown one utility right. Let us say this is my utility and this is my recloser, this is my laterals, uh, this is my feeder and one of the laterals uh, let us say some loads are connected and it is protected by fuse. So, any fault which is going to occur on the lateral we want that recloser should operate first. So, recloser has two characteristic recloser fast characteristic normally denoted by A and recloser slow characteristic normally denoted by B. So, you can see that I have shown here recloser fast characteristic and recloser slow characteristic by same color. So, the recloser fast characteristic is at the uh, bottom side because what we want whenever any fault that is going to occur we do not know whether it is permanent or transient. So, any fault that is going to occur on this laterals recloser should operate first. So, recloser has two characteristic recloser fast uh, and recloser uh, slow. So, recloser fast characteristic is the at the bottom side. Then the characteristic of fuse comes. So, you can see the characteristic of fuse I have denoted by green and blue color where the green characteristic I have mentioned as fuse mm characteristic. So, it is fuse uh, minimum melting characteristic and blue characteristic I have shown with the uh, nomenclature fuse total clearing characteristic. Now, these two characteristic are normally provided by fuse manufacturer and the difference only between these two characteristic is that fuse minimum melting characteristic arcing resistance is not considered. So, whenever the filament of fuse melt then there is an arc for a fraction of second between the two points and if we eliminate if we do not consider that that characteristic is known as fuse minimum melting characteristic and when we consider the arc resistance in that characteristic it is known as fuse total clearing characteristic. So, fuse total clearing characteristic is always above the fuse mm characteristic because of the incorporation of arc resistance. So, you can see that I have considered here on vertical two bars one is the minimum fault current and another is the maximum fault current. So, we have to coordinate this recloser and fuse characteristic between this minimum current and maximum current. Minimum current is decided by the feeders or laterals full load current what maximum full load current laterals or feeder can withstand with percentage of overload that is my I f minimum above that whatever current I consider that is minimum fault current it can detect and also there is a maximum fault current which is detected by this recloser and fuse depending upon the capacity. So, between this two vertical bar I f mean and I f max this characteristic should be coordinated and you can see that this point 
in this uh, uh, section the characteristic between recloser and fuse that is well coordinated. The question comes what is the need of recloser slow characteristic. So, it is basically just required to provide additional protection if fuse fails recloser slow characteristic will detect the fault and it will operate. Let us say this fault is going to occur and its current is somewhere here then first it is detected by reclosers using recloser fast characteristic it will operate reclosing attempt that is done if it is transient then it remains connected. So, system becomes healthy if it is permanent then it will becomes open and remain in open condition and then the fuse uh, minimum melting and total clearing characteristic is there. So, it is detected by fuse if by some means if fuse fails then also it is detected by the recloser by its slow characteristic. So, this is how the coordination is carried out between recloser and fuse, but here one very important point is we have not connected any distributed generators or any distributed energy resources. Now, the question comes as and when I connect the distributed generators the scenario will be different. So, here you can see I have connected this DG with I have considered the same feeder my laterals is here this is my laterals and this is my feeder feeder 1 and this is my feeder 2. So, here you can see for any fault on laterals you can see that whenever fault occurs at F 1 in this laterals. Now, when D G is connected the current that flows through the fuse that is different, because what is the current that flows through the fuse that is the utility current which is provided from this side that is your I utility plus. So, this is my I utility and plus the another current that is provided by this D G. So, I D G that will also flow through the fuse, whereas the current that flows through the recloser that is only the I utility. So, now you see that in earlier case when there is no D G for any fault here on the lateral current flows through the recloser and fuse both are same. So, there would not be any issue of the coordination between recloser and fuse and within this two vertical bars we can easily manage to coordinate both recloser and fuse, but as and when we connect the D G at particular location then the coordination between the uh, recloser and the fuse that is lost because now the current flows through the recloser and fuse both are different. Normally recloser characteristic is achieved by this equation where T is nothing but the time of operation of the relay which is given by A divided by MP raise to P minus 1 plus B into TDS where TDS is the time dial setting. MP is the multiple of pickup current that is fault current referred to CT secondary divided by relay pickup or plug setting and A, B and P these three are the constants A, B and P and this normally uh, we consider the extremely inverse characteristic because we have to coordinate uh, this characteristic with the load which is connected at the last end or tail end from the source side. So, if we consider the extremely inverse characteristic then it has the uh, steepest curve as we move from source to the load. So, based on that the value of A, B and P you can consider that is this value, TDS value you can consider as 1 for slow uh, recloser and half that is 0.5 for fast recloser. Fuse characteristic that is normally given on log log curve, so it is given by this equation log time of operation of fuse that is some constant A into log of I fuse that is the current flows through the fuse plus some constant B. Whereas, A represents the slope uh, of the straight line on the I square T log graph and it is fixed at specified value for all fuses of a particular system and its value is normally considered as minus 1.8. The constant B that is normally calculated by considering the three phase fault and based on that three phase fault on the feeder you can have the value of B. Fuse normally when you consider the time of operation of fuse that is given by this equation 
where TRS is the time of operation of recloser in slow mode and TRF is the time of operation of recloser in fast mode. Now, let us consider one big system where we have the utility with 220 kV by 66 kV voltage which is stepped down and we have 66 kV line available and which is further steps down using transformer and we have 11 kV bus available from which HT consumers or distribution feeders are emanating. And let us consider one of the feeder that is feeder 1 and on that let us consider the two laterals, lateral 1 and lateral 2 where we have the two fuse are connected fuse 1 and fuse 2. This two laterals are protected by fuse 1 and fuse 2 and I am considering one recloser here and I am also considering two DGs are connected at these two positions. So, now let us see what is the current seen by recloser and what is the current seen by the uh, fuse. So, normally when I consider this uh, if I just take the, uh, the diagram small portion of this uh, in an enlarged fashion then we have the system like this and four cases are possible let us say uh, these four cases are depend on which DG we are considering let us say we are considering DG 1 and we are considering fault 1. We are considering DG 1, but we are considering fault on another lateral. So, DG 1 and fault 2. The third we are considering case that is DG 2 we are considering and fault 1 and we are considering fourth case where DG 2 is we are considering, but we are considering fault on another lateral that is fault 2. Out of these four cases, I think this first two cases are very important. So, if I consider the first two case, case number 1 where we are considering DG 1 and we are also considering the fault 1. So, now you can see if there is a fault on this uh, laterals. So, recloser is connected here. So, if any fault is there current through the recloser is only the current flows from the utility that is I s. Whereas, current that flows through the fuse that is nothing but the summation of the I s that is current from utility and current from the I d g. So, you can see the current through the recloser and fuse both are different. Similarly, for second case where we consider d g 1 and fault at second lateral then also the current through the recloser you can see that is the current that flows through the I d g 1. So, I d g and current that flows through the fuse that is this fuse that is nothing but again the current that flow available from the utility I s and current from the d g that is I d g. If I consider the third case where the d g 2 I am considering and I am considering the fault 1. So, in that case current flows through the recloser that is current flows through the fuse both are same and that is I d g plus I s. So, you can see here if I consider this fault then the current flows through this that is both are same and current flows through the fuse that is also same thing. So, this, this case is not important for us. Similarly, if I consider the fourth case then in this case when I consider d g 2 and fault 2 then the current that is through the recloser that is 0 that is not there and current through the fuse that is both from utility as well as the d g. So, this case is also not important. So, only case what is important with us that is case 1 and case 2 in which current through the recloser and current through the fuse both are entirely different and that is going to create a problem uh, if we consider or if we refer the fuse saving concept then what we want is that recloser should operate first then the fuse because we want that recloser should operate and avoid all transient or temporary fault and fuse should operate only for a permanent fault. But this is possible only when we consider there is no DG connected, but as and when DG is connected then the situation becomes different because when no DG is connected current through the recloser and fuse both are same, but as and when we connect the DG current through the recloser and fuse both are different. So, now what how much difference current is available when we connect the DG which are going to flow through the recloser and fuse that depends on the type of DG, placement of DG and capacity of DG. 
So, what we want is there should be some proper margin available between the slow recloser characteristic and fast uh, uh, recloser characteristic to incorporate the fuse uh, characteristic and this is known as margin. Therefore, as long as the fault current values for faults on the lateral feeder are within the coordination range, the recloser fuse coordination is accepted that is without DG even when you connect the DG then even that margin is satisfied. Let us say for example, here I have shown the coordination margin with two vertical view lines you can see here. So, here you can see that coordination margin without DG that is shown by two vertical view lines and here you can see that the characteristic I have shown that is this red color is recloser fast, the blue color is recloser slow and in between I have the fuse TC and fuse MM characteristic. Now, you can see that outside this range if I take the zoom portion of this then you can see that here there is a mismatch in the characteristic two characteristic overlaps. So, this characteristic you can see this region that is perfectly working when there is coordination margin available between these two vertical blue lines. If I connect the DG and if my coordination margin increases then you can see at this point I have shown here this point then two characteristic either fuse TC or fuse MM that is going to overlap with the recloser fast TCC. So, what will happen that whatever fuse saving concept we want that is violated and for any fault somewhere in this region because that is the extended portion in that case fuse and recloser both will operate simultaneously. Even in this region also you can see that the characteristic of this that is overlapping. So, if we want solution for that then what we have to do is we have to reduce the characteristic of the recloser fast TCC slightly below which I have shown here and I have mentioned as modified recloser fast TCC curve. If I do this then sufficient margin is available, but again that is only for sufficient value of the DG which you have connected after once it exceeds that then also this is not possible means if I reduce the characteristic slightly below then it is possible only up to certain extent. So, what extent we need to consider? So, for that what is possible is that we have to consider this equation that the current in the fuse that should be add summation of current through the utility plus current through the DG. So, that DG current we are considering as margin and that DG current should be always less than some margin current. So, that coordination between all these four curves are maintained if it is not satisfied if this is not satisfied then coordination is lost and this can be also this problem becomes very complex when you consider larger network like IEEE 30 Bohr bus network there uh, you see that the system becomes very complex and it is very difficult to achieve uh, this coordination between recloser and fuse. So, in this lecture what we have considered is we started our discussion with the coordination between fuse and recloser and we have seen that considering the different cases initially we have discussed that we will go for fuse saving concept and that is uh, the concept used by most of the utility. And in that we have discussed that when no DG is connected recloser should operate first. Uh, so, that uh, all the transient or temporary faults are die out and there is no unnecessary disconnection of laterals because of operation of fuse. But this is not possible when DG is connected and this solution of this is partially achieved if we reduce the characteristic fast characteristic of recloser then up to certain extent that problem can be resolved. Thank you.